my redeemer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Beloved, we find these words written in the Holy Scriptures in 2 Samuel 6 chapter, down around the 14th verse. The word of the Lord says, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, ushers. Uh, with the moments that we have remaining, I just want to talk for a few moments uh, around the theme, worshiping in the spirit. Worshiping in the spirit. Beloved, I've discovered praise and worship are both ways of expressing our love and reverence for God. But they are not the same thing. Am I right about it? But many of us believe that praise and worship is the same thing. I'm going to teach this morning, Doc, so I'm going to take my time. You see, praise is a celebration of what God has done, while worship is an exaltation of who God is is can i can i say that again praise is about what god has done worship is about who god is you see praise is easy and outward uh, while worship is deep and inward praise is about god while worship is to god oh i'm gonna teach it this morning praise is opening up while worship is entering in let me say that one more time see see praise praise is where we open up ourselves but worship is where we we enter into his holiness ah we're going to teach it this morning praise is boldly declaring while worship is humbly bowing y'all y'all walking with me on the difference between praise and worship uh, 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 th this is why churches actually develop praise and worship teams but 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 here's where we hit an impasse we hit an impasse minister harris because the traditionalist the traditional church want to look back at what's proven and what's familiar in the gospel i'm just telling the truth here and, and then we have the modernist the modern day church they want to look forward to what's fresh and what's contemporary. But both, if I tell the truth, Minister Smith, might be missing the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traditionalists, the old church, and the modernists, the new church, they, they, we, we miss the point where, where, where choirs and, and praise teams were meant to be. They never were meant to be the worship. They were meant to lead us to worship. Can I just teach it? Teach it? Because we, have, we need to understand that this, this, this is not a spectator sport here. Uh, but, but, but when we come to church to, to praise God, it is to lead us into worship. It, it is not to be worshipped. Somebody talk to me this morning. Because some of us are worshiping the music. Uh, we got to be careful that the only reason we come here is for the music and we forget about the word. Uh, but but we, we have to realize that, that we, are, we are being led, we are being ushered in to worship. But watch this. If they're leading us to worship, then it's incumbent on somebody to follow their lead. Can I get a witness? The B 
beauty of worship occurs in community with other like-minded believers. It's rough sitting on the road with somebody deep with a frown on their face and they just won't worship. And, and they come sit on your row year in, year at week after week, month after month, year after year, and they won't even lift up their hand for the Lord. It's difficult, but, 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 but when you see him move one time and it becomes community worship, both of you, good God, oh my, both of you will begin to enter into worship. You see, there's a depth of strength that comes when believers join together in worship. That's why God created the church. The body of believers would come together. See, you remember when Israel came together in worship as they marched around Jericho? Seven times they marched and worshiped. And the power of the Lord stopped by. You remember in the New Testament, because I know some of y'all saying that's Old Testament stuff, Pastor. Give me something new. You remember when Paul and Silas talked about it a couple weeks ago? We're in the Philippian jail and they began to worship about the midnight hour and, 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 and God stopped by. But you, but you got to be will, willing to enter in. Some of us don't want to enter in. And, and, and if I could pause for a moment parenthetically because we scared of what God might do with us. I'm just telling the truth. When I was, before the Holy Ghost took hold of me, I was afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to move in me. And then I, I laughed as, as Alex told y'all, this is your opportunity to allow God to take control. I said, he right on time. God know how to put it just exactly where it needs to be. We have to be willing to allow God to take control. If you want to enter into praise and worship, you if you want to worship him, you have to be allow God to move in you. Now, and when I say move in us, and, and, and the Lord is just working right now, it, because it means that he has no restraints. See, some of us let God in and then we restrain him. He can only go but as far as I wave my hand. He can't make me sing along with them. You see, we, we become restrained. I, I can only pat my feet. Lord knows I better not wave my hand. Uh, I, I, I can't stand up while they're worshiping. I got to sit down because I, I, Lord knows if I do that, he might take control and he might make me run around the church. I, I don't want to yield control, but if you want to enter in, you got to let him in first. You see, our praise and worship should be a reverent response to God's presence in the place. Now, if you don't bring God with you, then he might not be present. <laughs> Each one of us should, should purpose in our hearts to bring the presence of God to the service. You can't bank on your neighbor bringing God. You got to make sure you bring him for yourself. But let me get to the text. Let me get to the text. We had a long day today, and I, it's already almost 12 o'clock. Ah, let's put some meat on it. In the text, we find that the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant from the children of Israel. Now, it's important to know the Ark of, to, to the Israelite represents the presence of God. So they had stolen God from Israel. Well, Jesus, who is called Emmanuel, is God with us. He is the presence of God with us. And sometimes we allow the enemy to pull Jesus from our hearts. Am I right about it? You see, the devil is out to steal away our relationship with Jesus, just like the Philistines stole the ark. On social media, they telling you it ain't no God. You know, in the political circles, they telling you you can't talk about God. 
But I know <laughs> from personal knowledge, because I have allowed him to enter in, that there is a God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, see, too often we've let the enemy steal revival and he's stolen our joy, he's stolen our peace and our happiness, but all these can be replaced by getting back in the presence of God. Can I get a witness? David gives us this picture of how authentic corporate worship can be both reverent and joyful. And I know his, 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 one of his wives back then said that she, she was detested by the way he, he, he danced for the Lord. But that's, that's another story. I, I'll talk about it maybe a little bit if the Lord allows me. But, but when we are reverent and joyful, authentic worship will take place. You see, the Lord Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only true object that we should be worshiping. We, wor we, we, we praise a lot of things. We do, but we ought not never worship anything other than God. Am I right? I mean, and, and there's nothing wrong. I know there's some, there's a school of thought in, in, the, in the theological norms that, that we ought not even praise anything other than God. But, but I understand that I was raised in a family where my family praised me. So I praised my children when they did good. I praised them when they did well. I, I lifted them up when, and encouraged them. And I consider that just as praise. But I never worshiped my child. I never worshiped my job because they, I made sure that worship was reserved for God. There'll be no other gods before him. You know, so let's get personal for a moment. And I'm still in the text. I'll get to the points in just a second. Consider your heart and try to identify the actual object of your praise and worship. What are you praising and worshiping? Sometimes it's nothing. That's all right. We're going to get you to a place where you can. Because I want you to consider what this text offers us regarding entering into praise and worship. Because that's what David did. You see, when we praise and worship Jesus, it should be done with intensity. I saw that today. How do I know? Because I got tired. <laughs> I, 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 that tells me that we, we moved into an intense phase of worship when you get tired. And, and, but, but I couldn't sit down. Y'all with me in that? You, you got a little tired. I started sweating. I said, open up the windows, but we're going to keep on praising the Lord. David danced with all his might, the Bible says, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. David danced right out of his clothes. Now, I ain't asking y'all to go that far. <laughs> but the one thing he wasn't doing, he wasn't sitting there looking out of the window. He wasn't mumbling through in him. He, he wasn't wondering what he got to do through the rest of this work week. He wasn't on his cell phone. He was wondering... If, an entering into the presence of almighty God. He was excited about God. And he put all of his faculties, watch this, he put his mental into worship. He put his emotional into worship. And then he put his physical into worship, into an act of praise and worship. Uh, it's hard enough sometimes just to get folk to be here mentally. Because your body could be with here, but your mind is what? On the other side of town. So it's, it's hard sometimes to get folk to, to be here emotionally because of all that you're going through, because of the struggles of life and what's happening in your homes. It's hard to be here emotionally. Uh, but, but, but when your body gets here, you, you ought to be able to allow worship to take place if your body's here. <laughs> In an act of praise of corporate worship, it should be done with intensity. We have to stop worrying about who's looking at us and make it do what it do. Can I get a witness? You see, you see, beloved, because apathy is a sin. Hear me in this place. Apathy is when you lack feeling or emotions about godly things. When you could care less about what's going on in the church. 
when your mind is, is your body's here, but everything else is, is someplace else. When we think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I, let, let, let me say it again. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Listen, beloved, I can't say that phrase without intensity because in my heart, I mean what it says. You can say it, the more I say it, the more intense I become. The more I think about what Jesus has done for me, the more, the more, the more I want to shout hallelujah and thank God for saving me. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about? Anybody that's been through something knows what it's like when God stepped in right on time. He picked you up and he turned you around. He placed your feet on solid ground. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And because he did it, I got to praise him with intensity I gotta feel it on the inside just as much as I shout it on the outside somebody shout glory in this place but you gotta be careful you gotta be careful you gotta be careful and, and, and I'm, I'm talking to the church so that we might learn something today you gotta be careful about giving this whole hum form of worship got to be careful because sometimes we give that whole hum I'm doing God a favor type worship you got to give him intensity do you remember what the Lord's warning was to the church at Laodicea those of you who are in Bible study you know y'all remember that church at Laodicea that church was what lukewarm you can read it in Revelations 3, 15 and 16. He says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. <laughs> I would that you were cold or hot. In other words, he's saying, I wish you would be one or the other. He said, at least I know where we stand. <laughs> he says, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, he says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth so 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 you can play the game all you want and think that you coming in here Sunday after Sunday playing with my Lord you better praise him with intensity because I don't want to be spewed out of God's mouth I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in somebody shout glory in this place Now watch this. Somebody say, well, what was the problem with Laodicea? They, they thought they were all that in a bag of chips. God had given them a few dollars. They was all working. It's a church that had jobs. They weren't poor. And because of that, uh, they began to think it was them that was doing it and not God. They didn't see their great need for God anymore just because they had been blessed. Look at what the Bible says in, in Revelation. It says, we've, we're rich, we've become wealthy, and we don't need anything. But God viewed them like this. He said, you wretched, miserable, you're poor, and you're blind, and you're naked. I'm just telling the truth and shame the devil. If you are in the sanctuary and if you're watching on live stream, if you're just watching, then you're being entertained. I used to think that when I watched service on or the reruns of service or other services, that 
I found it hard to enter into worship. And I used to say, I used to want to cut the live stream. And then one day, I, 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 I caught a word and started entering. It just took me there. I just pulled, oh, I, got, I got to listen to this. I, I went into worship and I realized that it can take place over the airs. But it wasn't taking place in me because I was blocking it. I decided that I wanted to watch it and not participate. Even at home, you have to focus in order to participate. You got to say amen. Even if you talk into your phone, you have to enter in. Because you ain't talking to the people on the phone. Your amen goes to God. It has nothing to do. I don't say amen for y'all. I, I, don't, I don't do any. I do it to glorify who? God. It says, let everything that have breath, what? Praise the Lord. See, I'm looking for a few folk like David that, that the Lord, uh, it was pleased with his intensive worship. Uh, David didn't care what, what, his, what his generals thought about his worship. He didn't care what the people around him thought about his worship. David entered in to praise and worship because of what God has done and what God was doing with him on the inside. How many of us can say that we are willing to praise God for what he's done, but not just what he's done on the outside. I began to worship him when I think about what he's done to me on the inside. How he cleaned me up and turned me around. How he washed me whiter than snow. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Some folk like David, our love for God needs to be expressed and it needs to be done passionately. Let me get, let me hasten on part two, part two. Second, secondly, when we praise God and worship the Lord, it should be done with a variety. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't praise and worship the same. We don't have to do, yo, yo. I, I laughed <laughs> this morning and I hope y'all don't mind me talking about y'all. We family, we can talk. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I want to see, well, I should say it. I don't want to hurt no feelings or that like that. Folk take me sometimes too serious. This morning, when Sister Victory came out in the aisle and walked around the church, I had never seen her do that. But watch this. There were people before her that came and ran. Different type, variety, variety. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You, you worship how God enters into you. You, you worship it in how the spirit moves you. She, she generally just walked. But that was her blessing to the Lord. That was, it was between her and God, and it blew, it blew my mind because I had never seen, I said, seen some of y'all jump out there and y'all take off running. And then she stepped out there and she just strode. Her and her Lord. She wasn't worried about y'all because it ain't had nothing to do with all of us who are present. It was her connecting with her God. No different than anybody who shouts. No, no different than anybody who waves their hand. No different than anybody that, that, that just begins to cry. It's a variety of ways to enter into praise and worship. Now, the text, the Bible gives us some ways now that we can do it. On, on the strength, you know, for their are, they are, they are, prayers are, are a way of praise and worship. Uh, all kinds of musical instruments. Y'all give me something. Y'all kind of quiet over there. Hit it. Hit it for a second. Hit something. There you go. Musical instruments. Did you know that uh, offerings is a way of worship? Did you, did you know that dancing is a way of worship? Did you know that eating Eating, communion, it's worship, it's worship. And I could go into all of the Hebrew terms of Barak and Shabak and Tahila and Todah. I'm not going into all that. Y'all know what it means to dance and party for the Lord. 
Y'all understand it. My point is not that we must include all of these elements in our worship, although we should offer up sacrifices of praise. The utterance of our lips ought to be done by everybody that can speak. Our problem is not that we're not expressive people. Our problem is that we're afraid to open up and enter in. Let's tell the truth, y'all. Shame the devil. If we focus on the greatness of God and on his blessings, not your neighbor's blessings. You don't even have to worry about your neighbor's blessings right now. Just in how much God has blessed you. It ought to bring you into praise and worship. He's graciously given us Christ. That right there <laughs> ought to be enough. He, he gave us his son. Uh, they, but, they, you know, we ought to. Mm, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. When we worship, it should be before the Lord. That's what the text says. And I, I, I want y'all to catch this phrase and then I'm going to go to the next point. The phrase before the Lord occurs six times in this chapter. The point is we're not to be caught up with the celebration, but with the Lord. Y'all missed it. It's not about the celebration. It's about the Lord. Watch this. We're not so much to be worship-centered, but God-centered, which produces worship. We don't want to go away just thinking that was a great praise and worship Sunday. We had a ball. We had a ball, but God never showed up. Y'all with me? But rather, we want to leave the service saying, boy, I serve a great God. Man, that God I serve is something else. I, 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 the, the music could have been wonderful, but I want you to leave saying, man, you ought to know me the man named Jesus. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you leave and you still talking about the music and the songs, you miss the point of the music and the songs. You ought to leave saying, what a mighty God we serve. Uh, I thank God for Jesus. Uh, he's my all in all. Uh, I thank God for his goodness uh, and I thank God for his mercy. <laughs> That's how you ought to leave worship. Finally, finally, when we worship the Lord, it should be done according to God's truth. The truth has to be a part of that because Jesus is the way, the, what? the way, the truth, and the life. So it has to be according to God's truth. In other words, we should follow the word. Not the world, the word. Like David putting the ark on an ox cart back in the text. Now. David had no business putting that ox, that, that, uh, the ark of the covenant, on an ox cart. What do you mean, preacher? It's easier to carry it. Yes. Yeah, it was the, that was the way the Philistines moved it around. That was the way the enemy moved your God. But when you read God's word from the Levitical text, it says that the ark should only be moved by Levites and it should be carried. It should never rest on anything other than the shoulders of the priest. Now, 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 now watch this. David messed up. I mean, he messed up. And his, his mess up was so bad that somebody died behind what he did now can you imagine him he brought 30,000 people down to to pick up the ark and they were part getting ready to party and bring it back but they had they were doing it not in accordance to the way God called you to worship God called them to worship by carrying the ark. In other words, God said it would be the priest, it would be the pastor, it would be the preacher that would carry my word. Y'all yeah. missing it, y'all missing it. He says you don't uh, follow what the enemy does 
And uh, see, too often in the church today, we following what the world does. Our church has got to look like the world. Uh, we got all these flashing lights and, and thinking we're going to bring in young folk when we forget that it's the word that's going to draw people to God. Uh, it ain't going to be about all the stuff that the world has to offer. All you have to offer them is the word of God. Uh, if you give them the Lord is my light and my salvation, uh, whom shall I fear? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life, uh, and whom shall I be afraid? Uh, they'll get saved, uh, but you got to give them the word. Uh, for the word, the Lord is my refuge uh, and my strength, uh, a very present help. Uh, in a time of trouble you gotta give them the word you have to give them the truth because the truth will set them free somebody shout glory in this place ho 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 y'all i'm almost there but give me one more second one more second one more second got one more thing one more thing one more thing this is this is how important it is for worship now notice when david first bought the ark and uh, and uh who was it Uzzah touched the ark when it and he died watch this David didn't consider what he was doing so after he failed went back to Jerusalem thought it over he repented but when he came back the second time you'll notice this one thing when you read the text First, when he first went there, there is no speaking of sacrifice. They talk about sacrifice. But the second time he comes back, there is a blood sacrifice before he leaves and a blood sacrifice after the ark gets back to Jerusalem. Now watch this. You can't have worship without a sacrifice. I don't care what nobody tells you. There must be a sacrifice for the remission of sins before you can enter into worship. Well, they sacrificed animals, but God gave us Jesus. He is our blood sacrifice. We can't enter into worship unless we are connected to Jesus. You, you, you can't do it. I don't care how hard you raise your hand. I don't care how many times you yell hallelujah, the highest praise. You will never enter into worship until you are connected to the blood sacrifice of Christ. It was Christ who bled, suffered, and died on an old rugged cross that we might have life. That we might be joyous in all that we do. It was the resurrection of Christ that allows us to enter into the presence of almighty God so I ask the question again this morning uh, why do you worship I worship because Jesus looked beyond my faults and he saw my knees I worship because when I was unlovable yet Christ loved me I worship because he's my bridge over troubled waters why do I worship? Well, I'm glad you asked. I worship because Christ is my will in the middle of a will. I worship because he's my lily in my valley. I worship, Lord. I worship because when I consider the heavens and all that God has created, what is man? that he is mindful of me and the son of man who visits me. Somebody shout glory in this place. I worship because I've been forgiven of my transgressions and I worship because in that great getting up morning when he cracks open the sky, Gabriel sounds his trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise first. I worship because in that great getting up morning, 
I'm going to see Jesus, the mighty Lamb of God, Jesus, the righteous one. I'm going to see him face to face, and I'm going to bow down to his holiness. Hear me. Hear me. I'm done. I'm done. When you worship, and it don't have to, you don't got, you don't have to, you don't got, mm, Lord, my mother would kill me. <laughs> She's been gone almost 30, 35, 40 years, and I'm still talking about she would, let me say something crazy. You don't got, boy, I can, I'm already, I'm already ducking. What's wrong with you? Listen, listen. You, you don't have to. Do what everybody else is doing. But do something. And do it with intensity. Hear me in this place. You can do it in a variety of ways. You can worship him in a variety of ways. But you can't worship him without the truth. And you have to have the truth in order to worship him. Shall we all stand? <laughs> Beloved, Beloved, consider your worship. Don't consider those around you when you enter in. It starts long before you get here on Sunday morning. It starts long before then. But when we consider that we only walk in the doors and we start worship, you ought to be prepared because all you have to do is just sit and think for a moment about how good God has been to you. Now watch this. I can't tell your story like you can. I can't tell, tell it how he delivered Reverend Douglas, delivered Minister Smith. I can't tell that story. I can tell my story. And I watch this, I can tell it with intensity. I can tell it with variety. And I can tell it with the truth. Because it was the truth that delivered me. So I'm not saying wait till next Sunday. When you get up before you go to bed tonight. And you're going to say your nightly prayers. Enter into worship. So take the word with you. Unique, unique. You can't do it without the truth. Can't do it without the truth. Need the truth to go with you. So, so you need some word with you. And you choose the mode of how you want to worship. It could just be a thankful praise. But enter in with intensity. Don't just pray and go to sleep. And then make it a habit of doing it on a regular basis. Now, here's the kicker. I'm, I'm giving you a qualifier. Because if you do, God will change your life. I guarantee. I, I'm, not, I'm by no means no prophet. That is not why I'm here. But I know for a fact that if we constantly enter into worship at home, on the job, wherever you go, I guarantee you, your life will be changed. And so will your worship on Sunday morning. Guarantee it. I guarantee you'll think about it differently. Won't even worry about folk no more. Be like, look, give me some space. I got something I need to talk to the Lord about. <laughs> Amen. Hold my mule. So if there's a man, woman, boy, or girl, and you don't know Jesus, our goal here is to go ye therefore and what? Make disciples. I was talking with a great uh, pioneer pastor yesterday. 
And he said, uh, we've, we've forgotten the word go. And this pastor's huge, mega church pastor. And he said, the church has forgot. He said, since COVID, the church has forgotten to go. He says, you know, the remnant that stayed is here. And he says, that remnant is different than what we had before COVID. If you look around, see, you're looking at some different people. It's a few of the same, but it's a lot of different people here. But he said, the church has forgotten to go. And after talking to him, I said, I got to mention that this morning that we got to go. We got to go and make disciples. We waiting for him to come in. We waiting for him to just show up on our doorstep. So, so in order to leave a lasting legacy, somebody say go. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, come on. Come on, slip out your seat. Give your heart to the preacher. Give your hand to God. If you know Jesus, but you're looking for a church home. I always say this to anybody that may join Grace Baptist Church. Uh, we don't look for pew members. We look for folk that's coming to work. Uh, you can sit at the stadium. You can sit at the football game and the baseball game and the basketball game. But God has sent us here to do some work. As I just said, he said, go. Am I right about it? So if you want to come and you want to take on the task of, of serving in this great branch of Zion, we offer Christ to you as well. We're going to love on you because that's what we do. We're going to lift you up. We're going to encourage you. And we will also chastise you when you're wrong. That's the way it should be. Will there be one? A final plea. If you're in a backsliding condition and you want to come home, come on, boy. Come on. I saw you come in. Amen. Welcome home. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Look at God. Look at God. Give me something. Amen. That's, that's good. God is good. Come on, brother, and show them love. Show them love. Show them love. That's, a, that's how it is. That's how it is. Will there be another? Will there be another? If you're looking for a church home, if you are in a backsliding condition, come on home. If, you, if you're looking for a church home, we offer grace to you. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. We're going to give you the word. And if you, if you want to check it, you can go back and look at it and see if I did not follow the scripture. My final plea, my final plea. You have to do communion. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. The men going to have prayer with you over there. That's Mr. Robert's son, for those of you who don't remember. He probably walked in and said, y'all, this look like a new church. <laughs> yes, that's Mr. Robert's son. Amen. Gone on to be with the Lord. See, he left it. That's legacy, y'all. Did I just, good God on my, he may have strayed away, but he remember his daddy's church. Good God almighty, God is good. God is good. I'm gonna ask, uh, as we move into, uh, you can have a seat, he can have a seat, and we get with him. Um, we're gonna move right into our communion service because the hour is late. Reverend Rodney is going to come and he's going to read our covenant. You can follow along on the screen. Uh, he'll read the, the minister's portion and we are to read the congregational portion. Um, I'll say this, communion in the Baptist church is for baptized believers only. It's for baptized believers only. We, we, will, we will commune anyone, but, we will, but you must be baptized. Amen? Amen.
I'm going to ask Reverend Rodney if he would have prayer over the bread. Reverend Douglas would have prayer over the cup. I would have prayer over a forgiveness. Beloved, we come in worship of communion because our God, our Lord, our Savior told us to do it and to do it ever so often as we see fit. We do it in remembrance of what the Savior did for us. The fact that he bled, suffered, and died on our behalf. He gave his body for our body that we might have a right to the tree of life. And our worship, the inward part, ought to remember this supreme sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf. He didn't have to do it, yeah. but he did. Thank you, Lord. And we ought to worship God yeah. in spirit and in truth because of what he did on Thank the cross you, for us. So we're going to ask Reverend Rodney if he would pray and then Reverend Douglas and then I would pray. Oh, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus. God, we come at this table this morning coming to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. God, we thank you for that simple cracker, God, that you transformed, Lord. That, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who sacrificed his body for ours. Now, Father God, we sit and stand at this table together, one to another, Lord, acknowledging that, Lord, that we could not do this on our own. And so thank you for the bread. Thank you for the, your body, God. Thank you for the remission of sins for sinners who are not worthy. But because of your son, Jesus, breaking his body for ours, we love you and we thank you this day, henceforth and forevermore. All the saints say amen. amen. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that we come, O oh God, around this table one more time, O oh God, remembering, O oh God, what you did for us, O oh God, remembering the blood that was shed for the remission of sins, O oh God. O oh God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough, O oh God, for what you did for us at Calvary. So we pray in the name of Jesus that we wouldn't just look at this as something that we do every 30 days, yes. oh God. But remember the blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross. And it's in the name of Jesus that I do pray and I do say amen. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There is a cross for me. Our Father and our God, we just come as you have commanded us uh, to the table, O oh God, and we're asking, Lord, that you would forgive us and make us worthy to partake. For you said in your word, O oh God, that a man should examine himself. And Lord, we know if we examined ourselves, we would find ourselves wanting. So we thank you for the blood that covers, the, that removes the remission of our sins, O oh God. We pray that you would forgive us and throw them in the sea of forgetfulness, never to rise against us again. Make us worthy, O oh God, to take part yes. in your communion, yes. O oh God. Yes. In the blessed name of Jesus, I do pray. And all souls did say, Amen. amen.
nothing but the blood of Jesus. We all stand. And amen. Is everybody ready? Amen. Uh, the Bible records in 1 Corinthians 11 that on the night that Jesus was portrayed, that he sat in the upper room with his disciples. And it says that he took bread, he blessed it, then he broke it, and said that this is my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In like manner, he took the cup and he blessed the cup and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink, drink ye all of it. This is my body and my blood that was shed for you. Let us drink. Let us drink. The Bible says that they sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to, but we have mountains of mayhem, mischief, and strife. I say to each of you to go in peace and sin no more. But before I close out, I just wanted to wish uh, Sister Leticia and Brother Rob a happy uh, wedding anniversary. Amen. For their first year. Happy anniversary. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross, I know it was the blood. Save me. Let us look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day, O oh God. We thank you for your spirit, O oh God. Now, Lord, we ask that you would go with us throughout this week uh, to be a comforter, protector, Lord, that we might continue to glorify your name. And by your grace and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, may it abide in our hearts. Now, henceforth and forever, let the children of God shout amen. amen. Turn and give somebody an elbow bump.